everybody, this is Jeff with Fuller Embroidery Works as well as the Embroidery Nerd. And today we are live with the Embroidery Nerd, our first one after daylight savings time. So <laughs> for those of you guys that don't know, we actually move the live around um, on daylight savings time so it stays at the same time because Justin lives in a time in a state that does not uh, observe daylight savings time. So for him, the time always stays the same. Um, just double checking here. The uh, for today's live, we'll be talking about uh, design presentation where we'll be showing different ways to kind of show mock ups to your customers to get approvals for designs, um, how you can do it with your digitizing software, whether or not you should do it with your digitizing software. And those are kind of the things that we'll be discussing um, as soon as Justin gets here. <laughs> so he was supposed to not be late and he's just a little bit late, but he let me know that he was coming. So to get started here, we'll go ahead and catch in some of the comments that we have here. We have Mark Basalda joining us. Hello, sir. Uh, Kingsbury Craft. Hello. How are you? Uh, TMG Designs watching over on YouTube, you guys. So if you don't know, watching on YouTube helps support us. Uh, and it's one of those free ways that you guys can support us. Um, that helps us uh, keep kind of the show going. So um we have cindy king hello cindy and she is in odessa texas and i will be there one day i think um because i really want to go see cindy shop um we have ramona watching from rockford illinois and uh mark is watching from japan uh shortly i do believe he's coming to the u.s so that'll be exciting too we have mr frank dunn good morning um, TMG Custom Design is watching from Orlando, Florida. That's awesome. And Ramona says, oh, that, <laughs> that is better. I was under the wrong account. I've done that. And yep, Cindy, we didn't know who you were. Well, I knew who you were. Um, whether or not some other people did, I don't know. But Ramona is one of the moderators over on the Embroidery Nerd group. So let's talk a little bit about design presentation now. When I'm working with my customer, customers, generally they send me art and they want it to be digitized and embroidered on a garment, just like they do with all of us. So that comes into questions, you know, getting approvals and proofs and all of that stuff. Now, generally when I get the art, I'll go ahead and um, digitize it at least in some capacity so that I can get the, um, my brain went blank because I looked at the camera. That's how this works. Um, so I can get a rough stitch count so that I can there then quote my customers. But I've actually, I do have customers that um, are some contract jobs that they'll send the client artwork and they'll get the proof uh, without digitizing it or preparing a garment. So um, let me see if I can share my software because this will be fun because I got a new monitor and now I don't have to. Um go to and if you guys do have questions go ahead and put them in the comments and i'll do my best to uh answer them um until justin can get here so we'll go share screen Ooh, this is fun window uh entire screen Ooh, we don't want to share the entire screen and there's yeah, justin i made it Woo, you made it all right, so uh, basically, Justin, I went over what we were going to be talking about today and design presentation. So um, while your computer's booting up, I was looking at loading up and sharing a software. Not sure which one. <laughs> I probably should have a design open, though, because I think that might be a good idea. Um, let me check uh, this one. Yeah. I'm, get, I'm getting one open as well, so... Yeah. All right, we'll see who gets one open first. It'll probably be you, actually. I'll go there and present. Open your screen. Did you find one? Yeah, I got one. All right. Okay. That's fun. <laughs> I ended up getting a new monitor, and now it's really weird looking at it. All right, so... Um, I'll go ahead and pull this up. So I have this design. It's a pretty simple design. Uh, my customer asked me to put this on a backpack. So um, generally when it's a name, monogram, something simple like that, I'm not going to worry about doing an off-proof and digitizing. I'll actually just sew it out. Um, especially if you 
Good thing I can't see my stitch count. 1,500 stitches or so, I'll just run it off and no, color it and lay it on top of the bag and take, it through, take a picture of it and send it back to them. Um, that's probably the easiest way when it's a small design. But sometimes when you get into bigger designs or you get into like, placement questions, it's easier to do a, um, a, a either a mock-up on the garment and, and some people prefer to do that. So um, you got your software open yet, Justin? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready to go. All right, go ahead and share it. Okay. Good theme for the week. So, um, yeah, there's a couple of different ways that I think you can approach saving a design to send to a customer for a proof, approval, you know, so they can see it on different garments, whatever, you know, fits best to how you're trying to deliver the, the sample to your customer. Um, a lot of people like doing actual sewn samples, uh, but sometimes, you know, locale doesn't allow you to do that if they're in a different city, different state. Um, Time sometimes is a, is a time crunch where you, you, you don't necessarily can to sew a, sam a sample on an exact garment, exact color or whatever it may be, or you may not have the, the correct sampling materials to get the exact uh, sample that you're looking for. So uh, there's a couple different ways that you can, you can share your, your samples with um, uh, a couple of different ways you can share your samples with the, um, the customer. So um First way is with the uh, maybe the easiest way is if you're just you're not worrying about a uh, actual garment for the background is you could just save a PDF for the customer. Uh, that way you can just go ahead and go to uh, print preview, and what that's going to do is it's going to call up a a screen that gives you options to. Uh, put as what as far as information you that you want on that cover screen. So um, there's an option where you can put your company logo. I don't know why my screen's flickering on this, but uh, there's an option there where you can upload your company logo so you can have it on the PDF in the corner there. Uh, when you select production worksheet, that also pulls up another menu that has several different options that you can that you can use. Um, the barcode there is, uh, there are some people that usually use the barcode system where they can scan this barcode that you see in the top left corner and it gives you the information of the, of the design. Uh, the colorways, if you do have different colorways saved for the design, such as like, you know, black on light garments or light or uh, white on dark garments, um, you can save different colorways to make sure that that uh, you could show the different colorways there there are if there's multiple colorways. Uh, Zoom, I usually use one-to-one, -one, so that's going to send the PDF with the, um, the design at, to, at the size that it truly is. Um, and that way they're not getting, you know, a zoomed-in large design when it's something that's only like an inch or two tall. Uh, this is where you could actually choose the, the different options that you can have in your in your view screen, um, showing the outlines, showing the stitches, showing connections, functions. A lot of this is going to be used within your actual production. So when you're sending it to a customer, you don't necessarily need to have that information. For instance, if you didn't want to use the, the crosshairs for the start and end point, uh, true view is going to give you kind of like that simulated stitch view instead of just a flat image. Um, if you have a background color, that's when you can select it here. If you do want to show it on a certain color background, crop to design just means that you can crop the background to just the design area. I can give you an example of that here. It kind of shows that gray background. And since I have this set up as a gray background here, it's, that's what it's going to show as far as the background when you select background. If you were to change the background here, say to yellow, 
and you choose the crop background, that's where the, the color is going to show when you, should, when you choose that option there. Information is going to be if you want to include the information, if you're trying to send them like the stitch count and the size and whatnot, uh, the colors used as far as the color threads, that's going to be uh, under the info tab. If you don't want anything and you want just the design, you select done and it's going to show you just the design. I don't know why my screen's flickering. There's a new system that I don't have fully. It's not right. flickering for us, interestingly. Really? Yeah. Huh. That's flickering for me. That's odd. Um, but yeah, I, I basically, if you're if you're trying to show a, a design on a certain background to your customer, this is this is going to be your your real basic information. Uh, your colorways is going to be an important one if you are try, trying to show it with different backgrounds. So you can save different colorways. The design right. information as far as the true view, the background. And I usually crop it to the design. If not, if you don't have that selected, it just does a full background of that color. And from there, you can actually save this as a PDF and send that to your customer. And that's something that is just easily sent to a customer. And and um, as, a, as a real basic sample. Is this, is this something you use a lot, Jeff? Um, it's not something I use a ton. Um, it's, I, I watch it or no, I, um, I use it. It depends on the software I'm in, whether or not I use it more or less. Uh, most of the time when I do the designs for my customers, um, it's, I'll, I'll run a sample if it's a quick sample. Um, but a lot of the time, you know, if I'm giving a PDF to a customer or to uh, somebody, I'll give them the PDF with some of the information on it, but I don't try to set like the color garment background or any of that. I do get some customers that, um, give me, like I have contract customers and they'll give me the mock-ups, um, that they get, that, that they get their approval on for their customers. Um, and I'm trying to see if I can open one of those up so that I can share it here, share it here. Um, I just have to make sure <laughs> what's in it before I open it. That's going to be the kicker. But, um, let me go ahead and take a look and see if I can find one that I, I can share. Cause a lot of those, they're very customer specific. Um, and they are contract jobs. So let me take a look here. Gotcha. Uh, but they do a really good job with their mock-ups that make it um, fairly easy for not only is it great communication for um, for their customers, but it's really good com communication when it comes to me uh, as I'm able to take a look at them and... Um, and know, you know, what it needs to be, how it needs to be digitized, what size, colors. Um, and then they actually have a mock-up of the logo itself on the garment, but not, um, but not, trying to think of the best way to say this, but it's not embroidered at all. It's just a straight vector. Um, so let me go ahead I'm looking for it and I'm just not finding any that I can actually share, but I really like to. Um, but I can also take a look over here and I can bring up Pulse because you were showing. Um, let me share here. You were showing the, there we go. I think you can see that, that screen. So you were showing the differences in um, where you would set that up in Wilcom. And in Pulse, it's, it's fairly similar, similar. You actually go, you can go to like to print setup or to print or print preview. I'll just go to print setup here and you can go into print settings. And now I can print it, you know, as outlines, stitches. I can do both if I wanted to. I'd rather just do stitches. I'm a big fan of printing actual size if you actually need to really print it and, um, and, put it down like on, let's say I've seen people do placement with that 
where they actually print it two sides, they'll lay it on top of the garment and then run up, run their needle on the placement to make sure that that works for them. Um, I can go into images, you know, I can print in 3D, I can hide crosshairs. This is all kind of the, the same information that, that Justin was showing there. Um, I can set, here's where I can set my company name, design dimensions, and I can pick any number of these. Um, I, I tend not to use creation date. Uh, I'll, I'll, a lot of times I don't use barcode and design name, but I'm trying out the barcode system on my ZSK. Um, so I've got that checked so that I can scan those even though it's like five feet away from me, but it's still fun to play with. There actually are a couple of customers that specifically asked me to put that on their information because they use the barcode system. So that's something they can, they can uh, utilize in their shop. So, yep. So I've got, you know, I can do number of stops, courting, um, hoop name, if I want to actually assign it to a hoop, but I don't really bother with that because your customers or whoever's getting the file will know what hoop they're going to run it in the machine. Um, I will print color names because I want to know if it's red, blue, green. And I also want to know if it's a specific color. So if I assign it a specific color in my software, that generally means that I've color matched a soft uh, color for my customer. And I want to make sure that inside of my file, I save that color as well as I document that color outside of my file. So if I ever, ever have to run the job again, I can look and say, okay, well, last time I used, you know, 1776 Madeira blue and I don't have to go, oh crap. Cause I, when I started that, that was something I did. I was running jobs for people. I thought it was great. Um, and then I had the first job come back and they were like, I want it the same as last time. And I went, oh crap, <laughs> because I didn't write it down anywhere. I didn't have a sew out. I didn't have anything. And I actually had to ask, ask my customer if I could have the garment. So I can color match the thread. And if you want to feel stupid um, and embarrassed, I was very, I, I felt very stupid and embarrassed when I was like, Hey, can I, can I get that shirt back so I can figure out what color I used last time? Um, it was, I, it is something that I learned from and now I write it down and I, I document it in my files. Um, I can also add, you know, if I want to, I can do uh, stitch count. In Pulse, one of the things that's a little bit more interesting is you can assign a cost per thousand stitches. Um, I know that we talked about pricing on whether or not that you would price based off of per thousand stitches. And most everybody that I know prices off of how much time it's going to take on the machine. They don't price per thousand. They, they price per hour. Um, mm -hmm. One of the more, you know, after you do this a while, I can estimate my approximate cost per thousand stitches based off of looking at it and go, well, yeah, that's typically, you know, for a 5,000 stitch logo, it's going to take about seven minutes. And so I can divide that into a cost per hour um, and I can assign it a estimated cost based off the stitch count. And then that'll give me another kind of visual of, hey, this is what the software thinks it is. And I can always check that against my math because that's, that's something I'm constantly doing when I price jobs. And when I run jobs is I'm analyzing how much time it actually took me and whether or not I need to, um, to, to change my pricing, to adjust my pricing on the next job that I ran. So, um, I went off on pricing again. I promise I won't do that again. <laughs> you probably will at least once more. Um, so now again, I can do my customer name. I can do scale number of trims, uh, thread usage, Bobby usage. I don't really think that I, I've never used the thread usage or the bobbin usage for really anything. Um, you could use it if you were calculating the amount of supplies you use, but it's so negligible that I don't really break down off of the usage amount because I guarantee I'm not going to, I, I just can't see somebody going, okay, well, I've scheduled 5,000 meters worth of jobs on this machine and that spool is going to last 5,000 meters. Yeah, you're... I think I think that would have to be someone that's maybe like a, maybe a really large shop that's really trying to keep their inventory of thread in check so yeah. they know how fast they're going to run through it or something like that. But yeah, that's, that's kind of really fine-tuning the details down to the nitty-gritty. These softwares have that option there, but... I think a lot of times it's it's something that's not widely used. Yeah, and that's something too. Like if you're trying to calculate your cost on things, you can drill it down. But 
negligible amount. Um, and you can always throw a $5 per order, you know, setup fee, and that's going to cover a lot of that. Right. Um, my thread sequence, you always want your thread sequence. Uh, that's to me, that's really important. Um, especially when you're setting the, the, the thread colors on the machine, some machines, you don't have to do that. It'll carry over with the file, but I, I do think that that's important to have on there no matter what. Um, recipe name. So Pulse has something called a recipe and the recipe is basically if you pick a certain fabric type, it'll recommend a stabilizer type, um, and some other things that it'll recommend for you to be able to sew on that garment. So that would be what the recipe name is based off of the garment that it's going to be sewn on hoop size. Don't really worry about that. Um, print white is gray is actually something that I think is very useful. So sometimes if you're printing white, you don't see it at all. So to have it be able to print a light gray color can be helpful uh, if you're presenting that to your customer. And that's that's one thing, too, um, even though if you do choose the option of actually listing the exact thread colors that you're using, um, you know, if someone can cross reference either a Madeira thread chart or, or online or anything like that. The, the computer systems now or the digitizing systems definitely come a long way as far as the rendering of the design. And it's it's pretty similar, but there are times where, you know, you pick a, you pick a color, you know your royal blue and the way it looks on screen, it may not look exactly the same. So I think it's always nice to have like a little, little footnote there saying that these are just computer generated uh, samples that re best represent real life, but thread colors in real life, you know, may differ, may be darker, may be a different shade, but that's just something where this is something, again, short of actually sewing out with the proper threads on an actual sew out, this is the closest thing. So it's just yeah. something you may want to mention to your customers that it's not exact. Yeah. And if you're printing white as gray, put gray areas will be printed in white um, right. so that they know it's just, it's part of that annotation. And then finally, you know, present, print design notes on a full page. So you're able to do that. Fonts, I don't really worry about and barcode list, you know, um, Pulse has a lot of features in it that you can customize that you can set that up for different machines. You can say you can assign the machine in there and it's, um, you can get a lot more information down on a page than typically most people would use. So so yeah, I, th I think this this PDF that we're showing uh, in these both systems, I think those are more toward, geared towards if a digitizer is sending information to an embroiderer mm -hmm. or uh, a production manager sending something to an operator maybe, or even to a contract customer, there's a little bit more involved as far as the actual details, as far as stitch count and sides and, and thread colors and stuff like that. Sometimes the end customer just wants to see a sample on the garment which actually kind of runs into this question here. Do you guys use the product markup mock-up within E4.5, which is Wilcon, or will upload your own mock-up? So actually I'm gonna get to that next, so. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and we'll reshare your, your screen, Justin. All right. I will click the button. <laughs> We're both clicking the button here and it's going yeah. off and on. So uh, yeah, short of the PDF, uh, another way of doing it is if, if you are not um, wanting to do it within Wilcom itself, there's another way of doing it where you can actually capture a virtual decoration bitmap and it's actually going to save it in a transparent background so you can utilize it in some other software like a Corel Draw or an Illustrator, Photoshop, something like that. Um, I actually do the resolution at 300, so it's nice and clear. To ask you where you want to save it. I'll just throw it on the desktop. And I actually am going to pull up my Illustrator here. So I have actually uh, Adobe Illustrator pulled up and I simply went to the Sanmar website. They have a, a lot of good assortment as far as images and all the, all the garments, 
all the different colors. So this is one way of, of actually grabbing a specific garment that you're working with. You can pretty much do this with every vending or vendor website that's out there that I'm sure they're going to give you some type of sample image that you can just right click right off the web and copy and paste into your, to your illustrator or your Corel or whatnot. Um, so being that I was able to export that design in a transparent background, I'm actually just going to paste, place that design into my software. And this is where you can just scale it. And again, it's really nice to have a um, kind of a, a disclaimer saying that these are general representations as far as placement may be a little bit different in real life, especially depending on the size that you're working with. If you're working with, you know, shirts, jackets, something like that, maybe a little bit variation going from something that's an extra small to a triple X. Um, uh, the proportion from the logo to the shirt, uh, it's it's really hard to to kind of get that exact proportion unless you start, you know, pulling out a shirt, measuring, getting those proportions in real life. Um, but this is a good a general representation where you can, if you know your proper placement on a polo, you know pretty much the general idea as far as how big it's going to be. Um, same with the hat. You can just kind of lay out simple layouts like that. I think that's a quick, easy way of doing it when you are looking for specific garments as far as you know, you know the style number of the hat, you know the style number of the shirt, you know the colors. It's a quick copy and paste off the internet as far as from your vendor website. Um, again, this is, if you do have a uh, art program to do this in, there's so many out there. Like I said, the popular ones are Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, Corel Draw, uh, what is it? Corel Photo Paint is there. Yep. Is there a raster? Um, designing program so uh, i was actually able justin i was able to find one of the one of those that i could share and this is the mock-up um that the company i do contract work they so they supply this to their customer for approval and then this is what they send to me for digitizing and as you can see it's simply just the logo um they put the logo i'll turn it white so maybe we can see it um, but they put the logo just in the generic area like you were saying as well um, they note that the dashed lines indicate imprint area will not be printed i'm pretty sure they had somebody say i don't want that <laughs> <laughs> yeah on exactly. there but it gives me the size as well as it's it's scaled properly in the in the vector um and that's that's what they use for their customer approvals um as well as what they send to me as a digitizer which is really nice when i get something like this because it's nice clean vector art it's exactly. scaled the side size. I've got the I've got that on there. So I just end up deleting this and I delete this out and pull this vector into my into my software. And I already know what I'm going to do. They also, if it's going to be color combinations, if they're doing a blue shirt and a red shirt and a yellow shirt, they will put the blue shirt, the yellow shirt person, and the red shirt person all on the same page with the correct color combo on every shirt. So for me as the decorator that's really helpful because now I know, you know, there's no question. Oh, you want me to put black on red or you want me to put white on red? I've got the visual there and it's laid out for me. So this is right. just, this is a way that there's a company that does this. And this is how they send me the art, which is really helpful. And up here is their internal reference and order numbers that I, I blacked out, but that's how um, they send their artwork to me. And they present that to their customer for approval. And yeah, and this is this is pretty much the same as what I was just showing you as far as using the uh, the PNG from the, the file. But this is actually a great way that you can show layouts prior to digitizing. If, if someone wants to see just kind of how it's going to look on the garment and you only have the vector art um, doing it beforehand, this is kind of one one uh, step of the proofs of just kind of throwing it on a shirt from the vector art. Once it's digitized, if they want to see kind of the, the mock up and the kind of the screenshot of what it looks like in embroidery. You could do it the way I was just showing you. Um, like yeah. Maldo just said here, he uses Photoshop for the mock-ups. What's photo nice with Photoshop is, is if you are proficient in Photoshop, 
um, you are able to kind of utilize layering in Photoshop and you can actually, if you have a particular hat or a particular shirt that you use a lot, you could actually bring it in and it's just one image that you work with and using different layers in, in, um, and, um, uh, it's, it's escaping me, the term in Photoshop. Um, basically just creating different layers and you could just change the color, just boom, boom, boom within Photoshop. It's a faster way than trying to go back to Sanmar, grabbing a red shirt, going back, you know, grabbing a blue shirt. Um, but um, yeah, that's if, if you if you know your way around Photoshop, it's definitely a, a handy tool. Something you can save the 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 backdrops as far as the garments that you use a lot and reuse them and, and just bring in that PNG every time. Um, as far as changing the color of the PNG, again, if you're proficient in Photoshop and you have that transparent background, you could manipulate the the color of the actual embroidery, especially if it's a single color. Best way of doing it is changing the colors within uh, Wilcom export the PNG. So unfortunately, it would have to be where you expect export a, a black one, export a white one, whatever colors that you're doing. Um, it's just going to get you the, the best representation of that color from the, the embroidery software, not trying to actually manipulate the PNG in Photoshop because you may not get the right tone and it may not look as clear as as or as rendering like embroidery that you do straight from the the digitizing system itself so um another way of doing it is if you don't own any art software or don't like using art software or don't know how um Wilcom does have kind of a cool built-in let me switch Back to my Wilcom here. Uh, up here, and again, your menus may look a little bit different than mine, um, but there is a show products option in Wilcom where it'll actually pull up this uh, docket here, and they have some generic products already built into their to their database in the software. Um, so you can see they're, they're separated in folders. Uh, they have accessories, different blank, uh, blank screen. They have fleece sweatshirts, headwear, uh, jackets, polos. So they actually have some, some pretty just generic images. So say like we wanted to do a hat. Um, one thing about using these built-in products, uh, unlike a backdrop where you bring in your artwork to digitize from, um, it's not something where it's going to be shown up in your elements or objects list where you can turn off and on as far as locking and grabbing it, manipulating the size like you usually do with artwork or, or the embroidery itself. Um, you'll actually go into the settings tab right here and that's going to kind of give you the, where you can change the size and whatnot. Let's make that too small. No. Also the positioning, it allows you to kind of move either with these arrows over here, or it kind of gives you the values of the, of the distance that you can move. Um, as far as color, Again, it's it's a pretty generic, as you can see, it kind of kind of gives you just a, a ghost image of that of that garment in the background. You can you can use the uh, the coloring where it'll actually just kind of color the full garment, the color that you choose. Um, I think this is good for just like really quick ref reference as far as uh, a quick mock up. If someone just says, "Hey, can I see this logo on a?" on a blue hat. It's just something you can quickly grab. It's built in. And, and then that's something that you can, you can do the same thing as far as saving as a PDF. Uh, when you go to that print preview and you go into your options under the design option tab, it's going to have where you can select the product and not the background. And that's where it's going to actually use the product as your background. 
and again within your product um, moving it and scaling it is within those settings but you could always just kind of grab your design itself to um, manipulate the scale to try to get that real life proportions for your design to your to your backdrop so that again that's that's a kind of a quick way of doing it um, i think exporting the png grabbing the actual garments um, utilizing something like Corel or Illustrator, you're going to have a little bit more control as far as how you manipulate the, the garments next to the design. If you have multiple colors in your designs, if you have multiple locations, like if you want to show a kind of a left chest and a sleeve or a hat and a hat side. Um, I know places like Samar kind of give you those, those different views as far as um, their garments, they'll show like a front side back of a hat. They'll show a front back sleeves of, of shirts and stuff. So I think the, the illustrator way of going about it is if you're trying to show an array of different placements, an array of different colors, it's kind of gives you one work uh, workspace area that you can kind of do all those things all at once in one page. So I think that that route is, is when you're trying to get a little bit more specific. I think it's more, um, it's a lot more better to show, show, show the customer choices. Um, this route within the um, the stock images that Wilcom has, I think this is a kind of a quick, a cool, quick way of, of showing um, uh, a quick mock-up. And one other thing you can do as far as the products, you can actually choose custom down here instead of using their, their stock products and use custom. And again, kind of going the route of of finding that image on your vendor's website. If you save that image from the website and you click custom, you can load your own products. So like I say that hat that I had earlier in Illustrator. And again, the settings as far as size and whatnot, you're gonna control under the settings tab, basement. So again, if you're not comfortable or you don't want to use the art programs, but you do want to use specific garments that you're using from a, from a vendor, that's that's another quick way of doing it. Uh, is, is actually importing it into Wilcom and, and going from there and now putting that that PDF. So I think uh, I think quick mockups are the way to go from the actual software as far as Wilcom the way they have it set up. Um, it's you, I, you, I'm sure you could, well, actually you can't, when you're using that setup, as far as a, a garment, it only allows you to bring in one garment at a time. So if you were doing, uh, say a hat, a beanie, a jacket and a shirt, you would have to do those all individually. I'll put it, the PDF with the hat, you know, turn that one off, bring in the shirt so far and so, uh, uh, so on and so forth. So you would have to do it kind of one by one if you are doing it in the art program, just a matter of, you know, copying, pasting all the different garments, different colors, and then you could just slap your PNG on all those garments. It's a little bit quicker to show kind of array of different things. So I think those are the kind of the give and take as far as the, the different ways of doing it in Wilcom. So awesome. I will pass this over to uh, Jeff because it looks like he's got some stuff in Pulse that you can uh, use for, for layout. So. so let me go ahead and add to stream. So one of the really cool things here uh, and ways that you can do this is, is actually, let me remember where it's at. My brain just went and I clicked off the right tab, segment, generation, processing, right there, processing. So you can actually do a quotation uh, estimate and let me take that off because I don't want you guys to see where I've got my file hidden. Um, but we'll go there and there and there you go. That one there and there and there. So I've grabbed the, the file from where it's hidden. And it actually, it's going to go in here and it's going to strip this information out of the file, the number of stitches, 
number of trims, average handling time. So I can actually put in an average handling time. Like let's say it takes me three minutes. That's for if applique. So if you guys are trimming your applique, that's really handy. And that's in seconds. So I'm just going to ignore that. Um, but I can set my machine speed, my operation timing. So your operation timing is generally how long it takes for it to trim, the power change to start. Um, you can add in uh, machine setup time. So if you have to set up per job, um, you can add that in there. And then you can throw in your pricing here based off of per thousand stitches. So um, if you want to estimate, I have roughly $2 per thousand stitches. And then I, have, I go down as the quantity happens. And that's about where it is um on there and then i can add in here additional cost to be used for quotation so i can say you know what digitizing cost and I can add material for if i'm going to be doing applique um backing topping i can add all that in there as well then we go next and i can put in my customer details which i'm not going to put any and i can put in my company details and i can hit next and then i can add the number of pieces so let's say i'm going to do 12 pieces i can do my delivery date as let's just say i'm going to deliver it on the 30th and now I can actually go in here and I can pick a garment that I'm going to put it on um, or just a fabric type. So if I'm just going to be putting it on top of the fabric, uh, I want to show up based off of fabric. So let's go ahead and go here and we will go with um, the K front white. And I can kind of add that to where it should be on the left chest. And I can scale it down just a little bit. Um, pull it back down because it'll probably fall right about there. I can now, when you output the the information as far as the PDF, will that include all that quotation? Do you have that option in, in Pulse? So I'll go ahead and this is, I mean, it would probably be a lot bigger um, if I didn't have a 4K monitor. Um, but we'll just go ahead and do finish and I'm going to print it to PDF and we'll just save it to my desktop as quote three. <coughs> and we'll save the PDF there. And then I'm just going to go here. And we'll grab quote three and we'll bring it over. So you can see I've got my color number. I've got my price range here um, based off of the number of garments that I'm going to do. If I remember right, I don't remember how many I put. <laughs> but it's going to have that information as well as the time per order, um, which is calculated off of the number of garments I'm doing. And my promise delivery date, something that I can give to my customer and say, here's uh, what it's going to be. And that'll kick it all out in a PDF. Um, if I put, you know, customer name, business name, it would add that all up there at the top, but I, it would take me a long time to fill all that out because I haven't filled right. that out before, but that's one of the ways that they handle it in pulse, which is pretty slick. Um, because it actually grabs the information off of here and it gives you some information or if I'm giving that, um, my wife generally tends to communicate between myself and customers. Um, and she organizes all the orders that gives her information where she can quote the customer based off of that document, which is based off the garment and the number of items that they're requesting. So it's one of the, um, one of the ways that it can be handled in pulse. So that, yeah, that reminds me of something you mentioned as far as you, you don't necessarily have to use a, a garment, but if you just want to kind of a, give a, of a texture and a color of, of a of a garment, that is actually a, an option in Wacom as well. Um, with the screen that you pull up to to change the background, there's actually some some stock um, materials that you can choose, and it gives you an array of colors. So if you yeah. wanted to kind of mimic a, a piquet shirt, it's kind of got that piquet look and you can choose white, black, whatever it is. So if you didn't have to be so specific to, to a garment, you're just trying to kind of get that again, that computer generated image to kind of mock up a material with, with, with stitches. That's, that's another quick way of doing it. Yep. And you know, there's always the, the way that you can go, I can do file and I can say, um, export and I can export the image file, which is going to give me the 3D rendering of, mm -hmm. the, of the file, just like it would in Wilcom. So if I go ahead and I'll put that on my desktop and we'll save that. And then I have my folders over here. So I'll be able to pull that up and it'll save that to where I can take it. I can drop it in to um, Illustrator Corel and I can throw that on top of a garment. I tend and this is me personally, and I don't know what your thoughts are on this, Justin, but I tend not to like to give my customers 
uh, digital renders, especially if it's got small lettering. Um, because of the amount of push and pull that you have to add for the file, they see that and they go, no, <laughs> the, the was, text needs uh, to be even. <laughs> I was about to bring that up. Um, not only do you have to be careful with the color, you know, like this, this red that Jeff has on his screen, you know, you may use 1747 red. That may not look exactly like this, but if this was smaller lettering, and it's it's going to be real apparent as far as the push and pull that Jeff uses in this design. So the customer is going to unfortunately kind of see that that stutter stare of the height of the letters, and it is going to look like it's not properly done. So, so let me get rid of these. Um, boy, that was great! It grabbed all of them. I swear. <laughs> Really, when you start getting into the smaller text of things, you know, the L's and U's are sitting a lot lower than if I draw the baseline there and I put it at the bottom of the object, you can see how the curved objects are sitting far below the baseline. If I had this text bunched right up next to each other to where um, that it wasn't stretched out for the customer, it was all, you know, like a, a smaller word, they would see that and they probably, I mean, honestly, I would see it in a mock-up with this too. And they will say something, right? Guarantee it. They will say something that doesn't look right. And it won't because it's not sewn out yet. And, and it all comes into the push and the pull that we have on our, um, that we have on our machines that, that your digitizer accounts for, but in the digital render, it's not going to mock up. So right. that's one of the reasons why I like to just give them a vector mock-up and a sewn sample before I run the order versus rendering it in thread. Um, I know when I started, I used to render it all in thread because I thought that's the best way to show embroidery. Um, but I think that, I mean, honestly, I think I give myself more problems by doing that than just showing them a flat vector and then telling them before I run the job, I'm going to run one sample and I'll send you a picture of it. And then once you approve that, I'll run the rest of them. Um, and if it's a short turnaround job, I will tell them the exact same thing. I will run a sample and I need your approval before I do it. And if you want this job by the time, you're going to want to get me that approval back really, really quick. Because right. if not, I'm going to move on to the next job and then it'll have to come in after that. So um, you just have to be. Yeah. Right so here. it, you know, given when I give it a design to a customer, you know, 99% of the time it is a, an embroiderer that's going to be doing the embroidery work. Um, I can tell when someone is kind of new to the industry and they don't un fully understand the push and pull of embroidery. Um, that's going to be the first reaction when they, they see that PDF that I send because I send the design file and then I send a quick PDF. And it's, it's mainly for just reference so they can see what the file looks like, the colors that it's in. Um, I, I, I choose the colors the best I can as far as matching the colors to the artwork they supply, whether they actually have those colors. I don't know that, you know, dealing with so many customers, I, I tend to use the Madeira thread chart unless someone specifically says, Hey, I use ice cord, then I will use that thread chart for them. Um, but that's one of the first things that I do hear from customers that are, that are kind of near the industry that say, Hey, this lettering looks all over the place, looks uneven. And my first question is, have you sewn out the design and you're seeing that it's uneven or are you looking at the PDF and nine times out of 10, they're saying, oh yeah, I'm looking at the PDF. So, um, so if you do use the PDF, um, using the, the rendering as far as, I mean, if it does have small lettering and someone's zooming in on your, on your mock-ups, they may notice, but I think using the mock-ups with the actual garments and stuff, that design in your field of your mock-up is going to be pretty small. Again, it's just a, Kind of general representation so they're not going to see that push and pull sending kind of the pdf of just the design it's going to be a little bit more apparent because the design is going to be to scale and it's going to be the only thing that they are focusing on so it might be a little bit more apparent um so i think it's just a matter of who you're sending the information to and what kind of information you're trying to you know get across I think the best bet is just to, however you send the design, you have those kind of 
those disclaimers, talking about the size, talking about the color, talking about the garments themselves, talking about the the rendering and just letting them know this isn't this is in real life. These are computer generated images and this is you know the best representation that you can supply without actually giving a sewn sample. So yep. but so I'm just gonna go ahead and bring this up here. Um, if you guys are trying to match your thread brands or you're trying to swap brands of thread you can always use threadconverter.com, which was uh, developed by Matt. And I actually use it to match all my threads to colors. Um, it does a really, really good job. And it gives oh, you awesome. multiple results. So you can pick the best one based off of what you see. Um, and then Ramona says, speaking of which, making a glide request. So it is under there. I believe it's under Filtech. Um, and that is, we'll just go ahead and pull it up here add to stream so if i went thread to thread and let's say i went with madeira because i know most of their thread colors <laughs> um and you go to poly neon 40 and let's say 1766 uh, sure and then you go to and i want to say it's under filtech glide there we go and now you can see here it gives us the madeira color which it's going to set there in the background and then it gives us the matches that it sees the closest as. It gives us a percentage rating based off of the um, the ocular uh, view. Um, and so that's what I use when I go to match colors, to swap colors between brands. If somebody gives me an ice score number and then you convert it to uh, Madeira, um, that's what I use. It does a really, really good job, um, especially with the upper matches and you can pick your color, but it also gives you more, you know, these are the 15 closest matches. So uh, usually I'm picking between the first three all the time. And um, Matt says something. <laughs> <laughs> Rumor is, is that Matt is working on programming. I don't know. Uh, we'll just go with that. And then Matt says, don't forget that you can now type in the name of the brands, charts and colors, which is, what I did there, you can go ahead and type in Madeira and it'll bring up, it'll bring up Madeira and you can type in that you want poly neon or I'm just going to select it. And then you can now type in your colors or you can just select them. And if you select multiple colors, it puts them in a stack. So you can go back and forth, pick your threads. It'll, you'll have all of them up here. It's really, really handy. So, yeah. You guys need to bookmark this site. It's, this tool is really cool. I use yep. it on the daily. So bookmark it, love it, use it all the time. Cause I know that exactly. I, um, it's, it's, it's a really cool. Tool. So, um, with that, I think that's pretty much everything we had planned to cover Justin. Yeah. So, um, again, depending on, on what type of information and, and how much information you're trying to do and how many different layouts there's, there's a bunch of different options. Um, I know people get some some really cool setups as far as Photoshop. Like I said, you can you can build layers and mask. That's the term I was looking for. You can use masks where you can just ch change the the garment color within Photoshop, and that way you can do some quick little edits. You know, save PDFs, save JPEGs, whatever it may be. That's best for your customer to view. Uh, with today's technology and software, it's it, you can do some really cool stuff that. That a lot of stores, if, if you zoom into pictures in stores um, that look like real embroidered garments that that models are wearing, you could actually tell they're they're rendered through Photoshop or something like that. So, um, I mean, it, it really comes down to, and this is something that you have to think about when you're digitizing these, when you're creating these mockups. You know, this is all time. You can go really, really elaborate, mm -hmm. but it's going to take time. Um, and it comes down to, you, you want to make sure that you get paid for your time. So if you're spending two hours on a mock-up, <laughs> maybe you should just throw it out the, the 15 minute job out once and throw it on a garment and take it. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. If someone is, you know, asking you for all these mock-ups, they want to see that they, they want, because they're building a store and they want to put 15 different colorways up on their store, then yeah, that's something where you want to say, Hey. You know, I can I can do that for you. I have the capabilities, but now you're getting into actual, you know, work that you're putting in to help them build their store. So that something like that, you're definitely going to want to 
you know, discuss some compensation for. So, yeah. Or, Hey, here's the PNG exported out of the software. You can throw it on whatever you want, mask the colors and, and away you go. But right. it, it really comes down to, to your time and how much you have to put into it. And sometimes, honestly, it's just a lot faster um, to sew it out than it is to, to go out with a mock-up because this, design that i was showing that's that's not up right now i want to say it was three thousand stitches it, it goes really fast on the machine mm -hmm. and i can do it on the machine a lot faster than i can do a mock-up right so that's just something to something to consider is you got to look at your time and then also careful of the information that you give uh, i know the first time i sent a wireframe uh mock-up i got in trouble because the customer asked me what were all these lines underneath this the top stitching and they didn't want to pay for those stitches and so <laughs> um, you get caught every now and again, and you learn from that. So now it's always a, a 3D render. I don't do the wireframe anymore. But um, it, it, it comes down to what, what you want to show them, how you want to present it, and ultimately what's best for your business. Exactly. So, all right. Well, with that, Justin, I, I don't know if there's anything else you want to cover. No, I think that's it right now. All right. Well. Uh, with that, you guys, it's um, I'm going to grab a couple of more comments. So TMG asked, Matt, are you planning to add a color, add color thread to the thread converter? You can uh, suggest those in the Discord channel where Matt has a thread converter channel. Um, I believe he's added everything that he can get an RGB thread chart or a digital thread chart from the company. So if they can provide that with uh, CSV values, that he can upload into a candle thread. So yeah, if, if they provide that, if we're able to get that, then that's something that he can add, but it, it's generally, we have to be able to get that from, from somebody. Um, Cindy asked, when will the new nerd shirts uh, for the nerds? We're coming out with another shirt run for this year. Um, it will be, uh, Again, it'll be limited. It'll be different than the previous two years. So if you guys want to make sure that you get a shirt, you're, you're going to need to make sure you get in on that. Um, we do have them printed. Uh, Justin's company that uh, he works for actually makes all the shirts for us. So that'll be coming up here fairly shortly. Uh, we're also going to be adding some other stuff too. So it's, uh, it's really exciting. And um, so that's when those are coming out. But I want to say they're coming out maybe later this month, early next month is when we'll have a store put up for that. So yeah. uh, with that, everybody, I'm Jeff Fuller from Fuller, Art, Fuller Embroidery Works, and that is Justin Armento from JA Digitizing Studios. We're both here representing the Embroidery Nerd. We'd like to thank you guys for hanging out with us, and we'll catch you next time. Good night, everybody.